Hey everyone, Steve Sievers for Bionic Buzz. We're here at Consumer Electronics Show 2019. We're here on the showroom floor. Let's go see who we can talk to. Okay, so here's Brinko, and we are a company doing the Brim Machine Interface Technology. So we have multiple demonstrations here for this year's CES. The first here is the video game that controlled by your brain. You know, before <laughs> yeah, so, you know, before this this our product is coming out. So people using the gas pedal to do the video game or just using the keyboard. But right now, with the Brain Machine Interface technology, you can actually use your brain to control the speed of the car. So how we can do it? What we can do is that we develop this focus headband. As you can see here, this lady is wearing. It's called our focus headband. And this headband will detect your brain signals coming out of the brain. And also, and then later translate this through the algorithm into a zero to a hundred uh, focus level or the attention level. So. The more you focus, the higher the attention level is, the faster the car goes. What's the best way to focus? Do you do, like, do math in your head? Well, or like yeah, different people have different techniques for focus. Yeah, you could do math or, yeah, that's a pretty decent way to do. And some people, they have the meditations, do different meditation to help them focus. And we found it's pretty helpful for them as well. Cool. Yeah. So you have like this kind of racing type game, and do you have anything else going on here? Uh, yeah, sure. So this one is the video game, but over there is a stock car. Let's go over there. Yeah, let's go over there. Okay. Yeah, that's coming this way. Yeah. So this one is a similar idea, but just the one is the video game, but this one is the real slot car machine. So you know before. When we were like a little kids, we used the yeah, joy cons or the nice. controllers to use to control the speed of the car. But right now, you don't need that anymore. You're basically using our focus headband. You will be able so to control the yep. Yeah, that's the headband. You'll be able to control the speed of the car, just like the same the video game idea. But now you are literally like direct compete head to head with each other using the brain. You're competing your brain power. That is amazing. Yeah. Now, cool. So, um, where is this going to be in the market? Are you still like, what's the? Are you testing it right now, or? Yeah, we're thinking about bringing this market to uh, maybe for school kids and also for the different museums, so people can try out the brain technology. And we also have plan to implement this to the retail market as well. So maybe in the future, like uh, this year or next year or a couple of years, uh, people will be able to buy this product for their at home, and the kids can play this one in the future. In a very yeah, the near future. Too, don't forget. <laughs> yes, in the very near future. Yeah, we do have plans for that. All right, so where can we see today? Website, social media wise. Yeah, uh, actually, we, this was the actually the fun part for us to do. It's just a demonstration. Okay. But we have more serious product for different application like fitness based and education. We can go over there to check it out as well. Okay, huh? let's, yeah, go. let's go. So how about let's go the other way around? Yeah. yeah. That's the education. Yeah. She's easy to her mind, the power. So I want to start our demo off thinking about what do all of the major revolutions throughout our history have in common? They've all come down to one thing, and that's starting to quantify. If you think about architectural achievements that we've had, those have all been about measuring very precisely what's actually going on. If you think about medicine, it's the exact same thing. It's about measuring the impact of the different techniques and uh, medicines that you're now employing. So it's not a far stretch to think that this kind of measurement, this kind of quantifying, is going to have a huge impact in the educational field as well. So what we've done is leverage brain-machine interface technology to actually quantify student engagement. Let me show you guys how this works. So this is the first screen that you guys have been looking at for a little while. Uh, this is the first one that the teacher sees when they're using the system. Um, and this is really important if we want to make sure that we're getting clear and accurate data coming from the class. So um, we've included a bunch of really interesting features into the Focus EDU system. The first is relaxation and focus training. Now relaxation and focus training are key to helping students build the skills that they need in order to succeed both in and outside of the classroom. So from their perspective, we've developed some guided meditations that actually help quantify their improvement in brain activity over time. 
and some focus training games that use the principles of neurofeedback to help flex that mental muscle of focus. So we're strengthening their ability to focus, we're strengthening their ability to relax, and then from the teacher's point of view, we have a bunch of different ways to provide feedback to both teachers and students so that they both continue to improve in their educational practice. I want to do a little 30-second uh, experiment with you guys right now just to show you how this works. We're going to uh, skip the meditation, but the rocket ship game is a lot of fun, so we're going to do that one. With the rocket ship game, I want you to do your very best to focus your attention. Because the more focused that you are, the higher the rocket ship is going to go. So it essentially serves as a mirror into your own mind. You try a bunch of different techniques to get more focus. You try concentrating on the rocket, focusing on one of the stars that may appear, doing some mental math, anything you can do to get your brain fired up. And so if you're ready, Tom, you go ahead and click start. Is everyone ready? Everybody's good? All right, let's get a start. Do you want to tell them their numbers again? Oh yeah, absolutely, yeah. That's you're a great two, question. Right? You're two, yep. You are, if you turn your head for two seconds, four, I'm three, four. one, five, and six. Okay, awesome. let's do this. Perfect, let's go. I'm ready. All right, and we're off to the races. Let's go. All right, 73, that's awesome. You guys keep that up. If you're if you're having trouble focusing, you can try closing your eyes and then taking your breath and then trying a different technique. You guys are doing great so far, especially for your first time. 82, number five, you're doing amazing. That's really, really good. One of the highest numbers we've seen today. Everybody's on the upward trend. I'd love to see that. Around five more seconds, guys. This is great. Awesome. Five, you're doing amazing keeping that just right up there. That's awesome. All right, so five, one, and six came in first, second, and third place. That was great. So what you may have found is you found a way to get your brain into that more concentrated state. And this is exactly what we help the students do right before class starts. We call it brain priming. It gets them ready to learn. And what we've seen in some of our tests is that students who do brain priming before class actually perform better. Now this right here is my favorite view of the entire class because this is what the educator sees when they're using the Focus EDU system. And this is a window into the students' minds. So if I'm a teacher, I know that student engagement matters. I know that it drives all sorts of different educational outcomes, but I don't really have a way of quantifying what's driving engagement in one direction or another. But now with the Focus EDU system, I can do exactly that. It gets rid of that problem. So now I want to show you guys how powerful and how much control you actually have over your brains because something we didn't expect to see but did discover was this. When we showed this to teachers and when we showed this to students, they said, Evan, do you know what is maybe the most powerful part about this? And I said, what? They said, showing students that they are in control of their brains. Showing students and empowering them to understand that they are in control of their focus and they are in control of their relaxation. We're gonna do another really quick 30 second experiment. It's gonna be a breath meditation one. And so when I say go, I want you guys to close your eyes, try and get really relaxed in your chairs. There's a awesome uh, you know, roller coaster thing, whatever over there. I know it's very loud in here, but do your best to just try and get nice and relaxed in your chairs and just take a couple deep breaths and get nice and relaxed. And when we press the um, breath meditation tag, awesome. All the data is gonna be reflected to this activity. So when you guys are ready, get started. Just close your eyes, get nice and relaxed in your chairs. Let your, your neck hang low, release the tension in your neck. Come down your shoulders, and then your chest, down your stomach, down to your legs, and your calves, and your feet. Right. Just release all the tension that you have in your Breathe in, and breathe out. All right, you guys are all set. You open your eyes, come back to me. That was awesome, guys. You did perfect. Wow. Look, right? I know. <laughs> and so when we started the class, when we started this activity, your brain activity was up here, probably t paying attention to me, which makes me feel really good about myself. I'm probably engaging you guys. But as soon as we started the breath meditation, you immediately see that drop off in brain activity. And what's so special about this is when the students walk away, they walk away with an understanding that when they want to relax, they have a biological effect on their brain activity. They're in control of their, of their relaxed state. And we can do the same exact thing for focus as well. So concluding, uh, if we end the class, we have a bunch of different really cool ways to uh, showcase this um, 
and data to both the teachers and the students. We didn't do the meditation, obviously, but this was your engagement uh, status during the rocket ship game. And then if we go over to course, you see the average attention level of you guys during that past um, activity that we just did. But on top of that, what's great about the Focus EDU system is not only do I get the average of the class, I also get data for each individual student as well. So what's great as a teacher is now I can go and look at my class after I've finished with it and tweak my teaching style based upon where I'm driving high engagement and low engagement. I know that if there's low engagement, maybe I need to change something that I'm doing in that part, part of the class. Individually, however, man, let's say you have trouble uh, focusing in class, but I see your engagement spike when we're doing group discussions. So as an educator, I can then go and, and tweak my teaching style to make sure that I'm doing more group discussions to bring your engagement up as well. And so instead of just intu intuitively, excuse me, trying to figure out what's engaging students and what's not, we're taking the guesswork out of it, we're quantifying it in real time, we're providing reports for both teachers and students that benefit from this, and the entire purpose is to continuously drive student engagement, which we know is perhaps one of the most important metrics that there is for driving educational outcomes. You guys have been awesome, thank you so much. If you would like your own individual report, you can go and talk to Tom over here. He'd be more than happy to set you up with it. You guys have a great rest of your day here. Thank you so much. Thank you. That was pretty amazing. So you can see what it looks like on my head. <laughs> Let's go see my report. Sorry. Let's see how badly I did, or good I did. Ranko. <laughs> Granted, I was videotaping during it, so. I think that should be helping you because you're doing something. Oh, that's true, that's true. <laughs> now, what did they test exactly? Uh, are you are you asking like what what exactly we're measuring? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so basically your brain naturally produces uh, various types of waves. They're called alpha, beta, and theta waves. And your level of attention is really just a proportion of these various types of waves interacting. Okay, let's see what I did. What that, number did you say? That was number four. Okay, number four, gotcha. Yeah, so... Um, this is you right here. Um, I'm gonna pull it up onto the big screen. Okay. And the way that you're gonna get this is uh, basically you should take a picture of it and then like save it, save it for later. Um, right, right here. Pull All right, let's go take a look. You can explain what each thing says. All right. Yeah. So um, this shows here that your attention during training was like about medium. Um, so good. it wasn't. It wasn't too high, it wasn't too low. Um, this says low, but don't worry about it because we didn't do this at all. Um, so the more exciting part here is actually during the class, you could see that, you know, the blue line's the class average and, uh, our, um, what's your name? Stephen Hinn came, came in hard and he was, you know, well above the class average. And then you, we, we could see that, you know, one is when we began the breath meditation exercise, uh, he was able to relax himself and, you know, be more or less at where the class average was. So that's good because it showcases, like, his ability to, um, like, relax when he wants to. Uh -huh. And then as soon as, you know, the lecture, you know, I guess restarted, he was able to, like, pick up his focus again. And then this is, like, a, a second page. So the synchronization rate is really interesting. So... The synchronization rate is really about, it's a measurement of how, of how, I guess, how synchronized you are with the average of the class. And uh, we use this to detect whether or not the students are actually engaged at the course content. So let me give you an example. So let's, let's, say, let's say, for example, right, like you're in class, you might seem super engaged, like you're in the high 80s, but it turns out that you're, you're actually just daydreaming and you're, you have like a very focused daydreaming session, right? So in that scenario, you could be super focused, but then if you're like, you know, if you're not synchronized with the rest of the class, because uh, as you saw, right, like you had a pretty decent synchronization rate, so that means you must have been engaged with the rest of the class in the course content. But if you were like in a super focused daydreaming state, you'll be doing your own thing, so you won't be synchronized. And that's what we kind of use to detect okay. whether or not you're actually engaged in the proper thing that you're supposed to be engaged in. So yeah. Um, <laughs> I so say I love this because I mean for me I deal with I'm dyslexic I have friends with ADHD so this is really gonna help them I feel like yeah yeah for sure for sure yeah. I'm I'm glad to hear that yeah so what's the bottom part down here uh, so it's like an ability analysis um, it's kind of like a it's kind of just a you know it's 
So basically, we kind of like categorize your like various ability levels. So there's okay. like you know like alternative stability, activeness, concentration, relaxation. Um, the like below, it kind of gives you like a description of like what exactly this is about. So like yeah. for stability, it means that you know when you're trying to focus, you're able, actually able to like maintain that state rather than be like very sporadic. Mm -hmm. um, I think the other interesting one is like how active your mind was. So. Um, I would assume that, you know, you probably enjoy writing things down yes. to like have it like be better ingrained into your memory. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, this is like some of the insights that we're able to oh, find. Oh, cool. Well, this is amazing. Say a teacher watches the video, how can they get in touch with you? Hopefully, try to get them in a classroom or something. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, website or? Yeah, we do have a website. It is braincode.tech.